السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله سيدي what is the role of rahman in the world of light given it governs the world of form and what is the wisdom behind hussein being little hasan hmm. looks like you guys got together finally came up with a good question Ali, Misbah and, and Haji Junaid came together and put one question that would occupy us for a week but alhamdulillah. The light of Rahman alhamdulillah is everything. Tanzeer Aziz ur Rahim since we're on Surat Yaseen wal Qur'an al Hakim. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim Yaseen wal Qur'an al Hakim. The Kaliman Mursili on it, Sarah Muslim. Tanzira Azizur Rahim means that for us, this reality of Rahim controls Rahman. Tanzila is for us, there's no up and down, but the inner power of Sifat of Rahim is the illumination for Sifat of Rahman. In simpler words, the world of light controls the world of form. The world of form is a light, the atoms, that which is manifesting. The atoms and the form, the lamps, the walls, the streets, the trees, the, the me, the you, the animals, everything is a light. It's manifesting from the power of its inner light and its inner reality and its inner energy. And that becomes the immensity of the importance of sound. If we fully understood that everything is emanating from an energy, we would spend more effort on Rahim and Malakut than the world of form. If you understood that, you understand how we teach. Then when you go to the local masjid, they think your teaching style is cuckoo. Why? Because they think that they'll use their form to one day achieve something in the world of light. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But that's completely awkward and backward. And the world of form can never achieve anything in the world of light. It's too far, too distant. The world of form can't even battle the devil inside of it. As we said they think they pray, the big, big ulama, external ulamas, they give a talk on importance of salah thinking we are people who don't pray astaghfirullah. Wow, salah is so important, so important like this and we get up and we talk and we've said many times before, we said, okay that your salah is only based on your wudu, correct? Yes, it's correct. But if your wudu is only based on your outside, means that shaitan is already inside of you. So your outside washing was for what benefit? If the devil already within inside of you. If somebody has a devil within them, their kareem that Allah has guaranteed, I have given everyone a devil to accompany them. If the devil in you is inside of you, what the benefit of washing outside? 
You think then your salah is counting if the devil inside of you? No, because Allah doesn't listen to the du'a of devils. So you do that salah because Allah ordered you to do the salah. But the great jihad is you have to first take the satanic kingdom down, then you can roam upon this earth free. So when the satanic kingdom is operating within me, the great battle is inside. So then how am I going to get my inner power, my inner soul? Well who's under that control of your soul? Prophet because the malakut is kulli shays, all powerful, all encompassing and the one whom Allah gave complete authority of all creation is Sayyidina Muhammad So the king of malakut when you praise upon him, pray upon him, focus upon him you're focusing on the most powerful energy of the entire created universes. And that when he has his nazar upon you, his love is upon you, his prayers are upon you what kind of power you have? And that we talked last night. That becomes then the most powerful reality that now your inner power is really is being empowered. You have an energy inside of you. When you focus on the inside connection it begins to perfect you inside out, not outside in. Inside has to be cooked, inside has to be ready, inside has to be battled. If shaitan is running through my blood, I have to fight him in my blood, I have to fight him in my heart. How? The dhikrullahi tatmayin qulub. The dhikr of Allah the salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad is the dhikr of Allah So the one whom doesn't fight inside has already lost his battle outside, his shaitan already running inside of him. That's why the du'as are not accepted. Allah well, doesn't listen to the du'a of shaitans. So tariqahs come to teach us because they're like mountains that shaitan didn't play with. Mm -mm, they come back and say, go back to your coordinates. In this last 50, 60, 70 years you've been fooled by shaitan but not the mountains. The mountains don't get fooled by passing winds, only people do. And that's why when you come back to the mountain they tell you you're doing it wrong. What are you going to do to the outside donkey to achieve and, and enter into the heavens when you can't fight your inner devil? You think you're going to now leave this earth and traverse into the malakut when you can't traverse inside to even fight your own devil? No, so they teach us doing wrong. That's why then the mountain, when you come to the mountains they teach you focus on inside. Do all the prayers Allah asked you for but know that you're not going to get anywhere with them. Focus on your inside, focus on your salawats, focus on your meditation, focus on connecting your heart so that your heart becomes illuminated and that you've made your connection, you're making your durud's and all your practices, you're keeping with all of the salah but at one point the energy begins to come inside and begin to activate the salah in which you pray and it's heated, it's powered because your shaitan has been burned down. Then Allah is listening to the du'a of that servant, why? Because the servant is filled with the love and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah always pays attention to the love of Prophet so uh, that's what Allah is looking for, the tabiuni, are you following him And as a result Allah's love will dress the servant and really burn the shaitans. Then those servants alhamdulillah they begin to achieve the reality of all their practices inshaAllah. As alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. So is that why awliya Allah 
being able to move through portals with Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the last days? I think this is why that we talked about the vibrations. If people begin to think on vibrations and energy, this becomes the importance of that reality. That if you raise your vibration then these curtains or veils are things that you move through. So if we look at it like a sheets of curtains, when your energy level is low and your vibration is low, you're stuck at the curtain in the garage and all there are, there are demons and devils. And you look around and all your friends are demons and devils and they have the characteristics of demons and devils. And that's why you get all these questions, oh this one's bothering me, this one's very nasty, this person is dirty, this one's like this. But when you raise your vibration, you change your condition. What Allah is telling you now in that ayah kareem, we don't change a condition of a person until they change what's within themselves. Isn't that now a description of moving through portals? Because Allah is giving us that, I'm not going to change your condition, now read it this way, I'm not going to send you through these different dimensions that you're asking for. Until you change your condition, what's your condition? Your vibration is very low, what you eat is low, what you make your zikr is low, how you think is everything is being affected by your vibration. You'll eat low, you'll think low, you'll watch low and you talk low. You talk like the garage people, nothing wrong with garage if you're towing cars here and there to garages. This is a, 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 a what is it called? Analogy. Means we're, we're stuck with demonic people when the vibration is low. So Allah is saying, I'm not going to change your condition just because you asked to be changed. Until you change the condition of yourself, raise your frequency, your zikr, your salawats, your breathing, your energy, make your connection and begin to breathe the energy. Who can send the most amount of energy to you that you don't have? So if you don't have power and you need to charge your car, what do you do? You bring an outside battery. Can you sit there and keep trying to do your ignition? If your car says no charge, no battery, you can play with the ignition all you want until you burn it. But what is it telling you is that you need to bring a battery source to charge this engine. What's a battery source Allah gave to people? Other people. We are Ahlus Sunnah wa Jama'ah, not Ahlus Sunnah by myself. Why the Jama'ah? Well because somebody in them may be more powerful than you and the collective whole definitely is more powerful than you. <clears throat> so anybody who wants Wi-Fi charging is then they go into the jama'ah because they don't need now even a, a, a cable line with all this technology. Go to the associations of people whom are trying to improve themselves, they'll pick up all the positive energies. Now sit and meditate with your shaykh, visualize his presence, immediately his presence will be present with you and again brings positive energy and takes away your negative energy. So then this becomes the means in which to build ourselves and recharge our batteries. Now everyone should know even more, they want everybody on electric cars, why? So they know where you're going, when you're going. It's a complete uh, listening device like a phone that you're sitting at, knows exactly where you went, how long you went, what you ate, where you came and when they don't want you to go it'll stop. But the main thing people are learning from these electric cars is that it continuously needs to be charged. If the car needs to be charged, what about the hearts and souls of people whom their energy is depleted every day? In a world more negative then we know it from all, all relatives that they go to work, they come back they're depressed. 
And so it's not from you being depressed, it's from the negative energy of people whom are anxious, they're depressed, they have no faith, no practices. And as soon as you come around them, they pull the charge out of the hearts of people. And again you have to meditate, contemplate, wash, make your salah and everything that Allah asked of us just to keep on an even keel. And then you begin to learn how to isolate from people. People are pulling too much of a charge right now, better to isolate at times, not continuously always having to be around people. So you learn how to preserve your energies and we're energy beings. So this is a, a very important time in our history for people to understand. It's not a coincidence that people are making everybody to get into an electric vehicle because they don't want any of the vehicles to work. And you'll be all tied to their systems. So alhamdulillah it's, it's a lesson for all of us inshaAllah that we are in need of this charge and to keep that charge and, and how to reach. And with that charge we can move through these dimensions with Ayat al Kareem is describing. As soon as you change your condition Allah lets you move through the veils means now I changed your condition. You change yourself, I'm letting you to move through these veils. So at everyone, anyone at any veil when they say, oh, I want to be with Prophet I want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Okay, that's a big move but it's not impossible because Allah is giving us an ayatul kareem, change your condition. So I'm going to eat like this, I'm going to keep the sunnah, I'm going to keep the love, I'm going to do this khidmat, I'm going to do lots of salawats, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 salawats a day, keeping yourself clean. As soon as you close your eyes Allah moved you into a different condition into the presence of Prophet so for every everywhere that we want to go, we have to change within ourselves. Allah provides the reaction. We provide action, Allah provides the reaction and the reward for it. And that's what's meant by make one step and Allah comes 99 steps. So it means we change the frequency, Allah changes the whole condition around us. So when you're vibrating very strong, you don't have those demons all around you. You don't even see those people anymore because your energy burns them and they're not interested in, in breaking bread with you, talking with you, even looking at you. The energy that emanates from you burns their eyes so they don't even look. And this is now the frequencies and this is the movement of these frequencies inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Last week you mentioned when Allah Azawajal decides to guide a servant, He destines them in the hands of Waliyun Murshidun. Are the souls of the students from the light of our Waliyun Murshidun? Nice question. The, the world of light in which Allah created the souls, that all guidance is from the world of light first. Then we came to the world of form. So from these souls Allah created these souls and said that, this is your guide. And in that world of light we said, bala, we said, yes. And a reality of their light is attached to the light of that shaykh. And that shaykh, his reality is attached to the light of his shaykh and from his shaykh to his shaykh all the way into the gardens and paradises of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why the, the, the thought process and understanding is fulqul mash'oom. That when you come into the boats of light, what happens? When a light enters into a light because it's no longer thinking in the world of form, 
you think in the world of light, when a light enters into a light what happens? It diffuses into that light. Can you see where one light went and where the other one is? No because one light when it enters into a light it diffuses and becomes a part of that light. So in the world of souls when people are connecting it's like an ocean of light like an ocean and they see themselves walking until they disappear. They disappear within the ocean of that shaykh and when the shaykh moves his light and his soul he disappears within the ocean of his shaykh and all of them are disappeared in the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad Literally they enter him and they see themselves vanishing. At that level their dhikr is La ilaha illallah, there's nothing but La ilaha illallah. These are the stations of uh, immense annihilation. So means that literally that is happening. And when they annihilate within that ocean and that light they become nothing and being dressed by that reality and when they come out of that ocean they begin again in the process of manifesting. But definitely you must be from the lights of the shaykh to be in their associations. That's why there's nobody who doesn't belong trying to enter into that reality. When they don't belong, they don't belong and when they belong they come into that reality. And that's why Allah gave and we gave the talk on the bayat, when you take the bayat and your heart is connected to the shaykh, if you break that you break to the detriment of your own soul. Because anyone who came to the bayat, to the, to the reality of the shaykhs, they came with their heart and soul. Nobody's soul and heart change, oh my heart change, oh no, no, no. They don't change, they're locked and glued from the level of their soul. So that's something that can't be broken and the one whom breaks it, broke it to the detriment of their own soul. So that's not something that, that is possible. The only people whom break it is through their nafs. When they say, ah, I don't want to and they, they go with their nafs, something. But this is all related to the Muhammadan soul and entering into the lights of Prophet So nobody can break away from that reality except to the detriment of themselves because they allowed their nafs to fool them. Now shaykh passes away or you're handed to different shaykhs. It's all Muhammadun Rasulullah based on the reality of where your soul belongs. Because some people can come to take you and you're not their property, you, that's something that wasn't approved. So when you return back to your origin then that's the origin in which you belong and that's the reality in which you belong and all of that within Muhammadun Rasulullah and those whom had a sincere and real connection and their shaykhs passed away, that shaykh from that world of light will authorize the other shaykhs that please be responsible for them like a yateem in which to bring their light, perfect them, bring them into My presence. Unless the shaykh conveyed the completion upon that servant. So alhamdulillah the world of light is immensely important and to understand for the, the capacity that people have that when your soul connects it's not something you disconnect. And that's why nobody can come and say, no now you, you have to be with me, no you, you have to be with who your soul has to be with, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Please forgive my bad adab, I'm nothing. Can part of anal yaqeen be through the qalam and writing? May Allah bless you. Can what? 
Can part of anal yaqeen be through the qalam and writing? The ilmu yaqeen is the knowledges of certainty and the ainul yaqeen and the meditation and tafaqqul so that the visions of certainty and to open the truth of certainty. And it's all related to the qalam because the ilmu yaqeen doesn't dress you unless you have a qalam. That's why we said the people whom don't take notes they're not really the custodians of ilmu yaqeen, they're entertained by it. Because if you come across give you the different example so you can understand if right now Allah opened in the room that where you're sitting wherever you are in this world and opens all of a sudden manifests the fountain of kawthar but you don't drink from it because you say this is really nice this is amazingly cool I don't understand how this is opening here you don't drink from it you just mesmerized by it take even a picture maybe of it and then you go on. So you can't consider yourself one whom drank from the fountain. This is by analogy, so when knowledges of reality come and you don't bring out the qalam which is the spiritual reality of the, the holy tongue and speech of Prophet as when Allah conveyed to the heart of Prophet and the Muhammadan tongue spoke Allah's words. That's the qalam, qul ya Muhammad, qaf lam mim without the alif. The main letters of the qalam is qaf lam qul to mim Muhammadun wasallam. So when Allah spoke, Prophet wasallam spoke it because Allah's speech can't be heard, spoken to the reality of Prophet wasallam, and what He spoke then Sayyidina Muhammad soul saw spoke what Allah wanted him to speak. Allah gave to us the inheritance of that, that why you don't have a qalam if you're inheriting that reality so your life is about the qalam. And as a result when you write the realities and haqqaiqs of this count of this fountain of kawthar you're drinking from it. Every time you write it's dressing your soul and you're drinking from these lights. When you don't write you're not drinking, you're looking and mesmerized by the fountain that is beautiful, take a picture it's just entertaining. So that becomes the immensity of that reality. As a result of their lives of writing they wrote, wrote, wrote and it actually the angels wrote it upon their souls. So they become haqq yaqeen, they are the embodiment of the truth of certainties. So now they speak it's all from the truth of certainties because they are the result of ilmu yaqeen that has dressed them as a fountain and they are the trainers of ainu yaqeen and the visions of certainty. As a result they are the walking oceans of haqq yaqeen that these are the oceans of the truths of certainty inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah See, what does it mean when one feels energetic heaviness and discomfort on their chest during a conversation with someone even when there's no discord? This energy. You can enter somewhere and all of a sudden talk to someone, not talk to someone, or just something and in, entered into a room that you can't see and it's now trying to attack your heart. So it's like a energy frequency sort of uh, event. So anytime the frequencies are going to clash there's going to have an experience. So it's just a matter of making your salawats, make sure that you're in wudu and just keep making your salawats to connect to the shaykh and try to push that energy away 
or to pass whatever type of energy is trying to affect you. So that beings are in the room that maybe you don't see, they could come at any time and try to approach you and make a conflict in your energy field or in your heart and chest uh, and your feet anywhere because you're de dealing with beings that, that are not visible to people inshaAllah or a being that is a, attached to a particular person. So anything can happen, that's why we're always keeping ourselves in wudu. Wudu is not only for salah, wudu is for at all times. You never know when the attack is coming and that you're always keeping your salawat, keeping your madad, keeping your awrat and you're trained that as soon as something happens you make your madad for the shaykh to be present with you because something is trying to attack you. And you make your zikrs and pass it but nothing shows on your face. Don't run, scream and you know, don't, don't, don't show anything to anyone and that becomes a spiritual warrior in which he's able to fight or she's able to fight through spiritual difficulties inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yathipu wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shaykh ya Rasul al-Kareem, Amen. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.